Hi everyone, this is Bob. I want to do a quick video about once you have a team, what do you do? How do you use the site? So I created a phony league and a phony team, and I want to show you step by step some of the things that you can do in this. Um, let's see. Right now we're at the home page. Standings, players we don't need to worry about. Here we go, team. Let's click on team roster. Now, as you can see, my phony team roster has a lot of nice players on it. What we have right now is showing Sunday, March 31st. We only have one game happening on Sunday this week, but we can move players around from place to place. For example, if I want to put, uh, let's see, Eric Hosmer, I want him to play first base. Right now, as you can see, I have Albert Pujols there. But, eh, you know, Albert Pujols, <laughs> come on. So, put Eric Hosmer. Two places show up above. I clicked on the little um, these little arrows. Two places show up. One in the utility spot, which means I can put him in utility. The other in first base because he's a first baseman. I'm going to click on first base on the green, and then the exchange happens. So you can now see Eric Hosmer is sitting in the first base position, and Pujols is on the bench. Now this doesn't become official until I click click submit changes. Now at the submit changes I have a choice to uh, make this change f to apply to all future periods or I can actually take that off so that Eric Hosmer is on first base only for the first day. And I'll click it off and I'll click finalize changes. And just to show you that Eric Hosmer is only there for the Sunday, let me go to lineup period day number two. And that's going to be Monday. And you can see that Albert Pujols is back in the lineup. Well, we can do this as many times as we need. Um, in this particular case, I might want to put um, a third baseman in because he's not playing on Tuesday. So I could choose Moustakas. And again, click on his little arrows and click here, and we'll make that change. I also want to uh, put someone in the outfield instead of Bautista because he's not playing right now. So I have I have Jay Bruce on the bench. I have Jonas Cespedes. I actually could also choose out of utility Josh Hamilton. If for some reason I wanted to move him out of utility and into Bautista's spot, I can do that. Now you notice that all the green that light up means he can be placed, replace, or be, be replaced by any one of these positions. So I'm just going to have him move up to where Bautista is. And now I have Bautista in the utility. I still need to make that change. It really would have been more direct. But the reason I might want to make the change of of uh, Hamilton out of utility and in, in into uh, the outfield position and put Bautista in the utility position, even though I'm going to change him out, is because now I'm not restricted to moving up an outfielder. I might want to get Eric Hosmer back in the game, who's a first baseman, not an outfielder. So when I click on him, I can put him in the utility, and now I've got a full lineup ready to play. I need to scroll down to see my pitching staff. Let's see. I've got Washington in there right now, and they're playing... I can't even read that. It's so little. But they're playing somebody. Um, I think instead... I'm going to pitch Detroit because maybe Verlander's pitcher or something like that. Well, the same thing applies. Got to click here and I move them up to that position. Now, I have made, I don't know, three or four changes here. And none of it counts until I click Submit Changes. The thing about this is, here's a list of all the changes I've, I've made. Um, I don't remember if I really want to apply what to each period, so I'm just going to go ahead and leave the, the green arrow there, apply to future periods, and click finalize changes. But when I do, and I want to have some of those players back for Tuesday's game, I need to come back up here, click Tuesday, and then make appropriate changes. So that's how the lineup works. Oh, one more thing I want to point out to you about this is that we have what's called a lineup period. And a lineup period is for each and every single day. Uh, 
every day we have a new lineup. There's an also another kind of period and that's the weekly period and that goes along with who we're playing each week and so there are two different periods and you just need to know the difference between them. Lineup period is every day according to our rules and uh, that's where you make the changes. Now let's see. We can sometimes sort our players with other information but I'll leave this to you to explore. That's just you know to get you started. You can explore that and find out more. If I click on players we see a bunch of free agents. Um, notice that we can adjust this. We can look at all hitters if we want. Um, and we look only at available players. That seems to be most obvious. Uh, but we could look at a subgroup. We could look at uh, catchers or first basemen. Now if we want to pick up a, a player, uh, let's say we want to pick up Jason Hayward, clicking on his name will actually only give us uh, information about him. Let's see what we get. Yeah, new window pops up and it gives us some information and we can scroll down and read more of what we want. Let me click out of that. If we want to pick up Jason Hayward, have him be on our team, he's a, his status is a free agent right now. So we simply click the plus and that will will claim him. If we instead click this middle thing, which looks like an eyeball, um, that means we add him to our watch list. And so we can go in occasionally and look and see who have we put on our watch list, how are they doing this season, how many fantasy points do they have, and things like that. And we can add to the compare list. I'll let you take a look at those. You can click on those and see um, how things work with that. But let's say we want to add him. We click a plus sign. And in order for us to add or claim a player, we have to make sure he shows up first of all. There he is. And we choose someone, we must choose someone to drop at the same time. So the reason I might pick up Jason Hayward is because I want to drop Jay Bruce. Now I don't want to click on Jay Bruce's name because that'll take me to that page again that tells me about Jay Bruce. Instead I simply want to highlight this bar that has Jay Bruce on it. And down below now I can click submit claim which means I'm going to add the claim and also drop the other player. And it wants to know if that's what I want to do. And do I want to pick him up as an outfielder, or does he want to go and have him go on reserve status, or do I want to have him go on active status? How do I want him to appear? Usually we just leave these alone. But sometimes when we put him in, it might create an illegal roster. So it's kind of important to know, uh, you know, where we got Jay Bruce from. He was from the reserve, so it's appropriate to put Jason Hayward on reserve. If Jay Bruce came from the active list, then we want Jason Howard to also be on the active list. We could always trade him out again in our, with our, within our own team, change the roster around. So let me click OK. And it says that he will appear on my team starting period one. Yay. OK. Let me scroll up a little bit. Um, the live scoring is actually showing us the, the daily accumulation of points throughout the week and so we'll be able to see who's winning who's losing with each other as we go throughout the week you're able to look at this as the full week's progress or just the day-to-day -day progress we also have the option of showing more than just the active players we can show what our bench is doing show all players playing And as I mentioned, we can watch the entire period or we can view a single day. That would be, we can just click here. Okay, I'm going to close out this window. And let's take a look at transactions. From transactions, we can ask for a trade. But we can't trade anybody until, of course, we select a team to trade to. And so I'm going to trade with Fastfish. And I'm going to try, ask to see if he'll trade Eric Hosmer for, uh, yeah, Joey Votto. That seems like a fair trade. So I'll submit the trade offer. And we have to wait to see if the other player accepts it. Um, the way it works in our league is if Fast Fish accepts the trade, 
then it will go to uh, a voting amongst the owners. And if four owners reject the trade, then it doesn't go through. If three or fewer reject the trade, then the trade is good. And I think there's a two day window of opportunity for that to happen. So owners, you might want to check email on a regular basis to see if anyone's offered you a trade or if a trade has been um, offered and accepted by two other teams because then you'll have a chance to to vote on that trade. You can either vote to accept or to reject but I'll tell you that um, it is indicated and it's known who accepts and who rejects. Uh, if you have a strong feelings about it, something like that then you can always send an email to everyone and say why you object to that trade. We can also put players on the trade block. We're trying to indicate who it is that we're willing to trade. So I can go to edit my team and I can decide who it is that I'm willing to trade. I'm willing to trade Eric Hosmer, Marco Scudero, Aaron Hill, and I can indicate players I want but maybe more oftentimes I'm saying I'm willing to accept a position. I want a second baseman or I want a shortstop. And when I go back to the trading block we can see that Beagle Boys has offered these players and is looking for a shortstop and a second baseman. Alright, before we go, there's one last thing I want to tell you about and that is how to change your team name. Under Team, we can go to Team Preferences and here's where we have a chance to change our team name and an abbreviation and we can also upload our own logo. And here are some other preferences that you might want to look at. I'll have you explore those on your own though. And whatever changes you make, be sure to click Save. Back home, here we have a chance for live chatting. But the truth is, very often, if more than one of us is on the site at the same time, we're checking out the live scoring or something else and not likely live chatting. So you might see that someone else is on here. That just means that they're currently logged in but not necessarily here to the home page. And you'll want to explore this page to see what other information it has. Well, I hope this has been helpful and will hopefully make your time working with Fantrack so much easier. Have a good year.